Well, all of the Darus next week, starting on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, we have Darus six days a week. All of those Darus will be running as normal, inshallah, next week. So we encourage you and we enjoin upon you the importance of attending the circles of knowledge. These Darus ilmiya, these knowledge-based classes and lessons, they are for your benefit. Benefit for the speaker because he gets the reward of everyone who listens to him. The greater benefit for you because you can take it home and practice it and it will become a cause of your entry into Jannah and a cause of earning the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your sins. So <clears throat> put it into your diaries, put it into your phones, put it on your fridge doors that we shall attend these darus, whatever the darus that you are attending that you will attend them every single week and you will take the whole of the family. You cannot continue in this society isolated from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is to your detriment. It will be to your detriment. Ask those who have children who are older, where are their children? And they will tell you, just listen to them. Those of them who sent their children to state schools, Send their children to these secular universities. Ask them, where are your children? Those who sent their children to the street rather than sending them to the Durus. Where are their children? Ask them. Ask them. And you will realize the consequence of sidelining the religion and not establishing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your homes, in your families. We are living in a society where people have more friends through their phones than they have in real life. You do not even know who the, who the companions or the friendships that your children have struck up online. You don't know because all of this is how this society works today. It is not like a quarter of a century ago, 25 years ago or 30 years ago. When all the friendships were physical persons, now friendships are on mobile devices. People, they just want praise. And that's why you see them putting their images, their own pictures online, because they want validation. They want validation from those around them. They want validation online. They want that thumbs up. They want that praise. And this is why suicide rate amongst youth and self-harming amongst youth has never been higher than it is today since records began. Because if they don't get validation through these imaginary friends or these friends that are living on their phones and they don't get validation and they don't get praise and they're not told how good they look and how handsome they are that they feel disheartened and they get depressed and then it builds and it builds and this is why suicide rates amongst youth are so high because we haven't and our communities and our Muslim brothers and sisters haven't cultivated their children sufficiently in the durus, ilmiya, in the knowledge-based circles they are not studying Salatul Usul you haven't taught them the three fundamental principles of Islam. You haven't taught them Kitab because you can't teach them. Because you can't give what you don't have. But you don't bring them to the Durus who, to sit with someone who can teach them. They don't know the names and attributes of Allah. They don't know about the Qadr of Allah. They don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares the rizq amongst the people and divides it. Because you haven't paid attention. And when you do wake up, it's too late because now your child is 14 and 15 and he and she don't want to listen to you. They don't want to listen to you because there's a louder voice in their ear and it's louder than mom and dad. And that is the voice of society. The voice of the establishment. The voice of social media. Why do you think they take pictures of themselves? A person who takes a picture of themselves and then puts it on his social media or on her social media 
and then replaces it every week. They're looking for validation every week. And if they don't get it, they get depressed. These are people who love themselves, who want to love themselves. And in fact, they love themselves. The deen teaches us to, to, be, to have humility and humbleness. And we've been, you know, we've been singing this same tune to you year in and year out. Yes, our durus are getting bigger. Yes, we do have, you know, six, seven, maybe eight hundred who are sitting in durus. But compared to the population of Muslims that we have in this city and in the United Kingdom as a whole, it is a minuscule amount. It's not numbers that we seek, but we do want their salvation. It's not that we want to increase our numbers by increasing our numbers. Somehow, you know, we're all going to get richer. No, because you don't. If someone listening to your dars doesn't give you wealth except for the wealth of the Akhirah. But these durus, they are good for the people. They are good for society. They are good for the community. They are good for families. How a child can walk around from a Salafi family and he doesn't know the Tawheed. He doesn't know how to define what Tawheed is. Let alone that he can speak with the three categories of Tawheed. Let alone that he can explain or give you even a basic understanding of Surah Al-Fatiha. Your children can't. Ask your child to explain to you Tawheed for five minutes. Go home and do that test. Go home and test your family. My son, my daughter, my wife, talk to me for five minutes about Tawheed. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke with it for 23 years. The Quran is filled with it. The Hadith are filled with it. Just give me five minutes. Five minutes explain to me Tawheed. Then explain to me Sunnah for another five minutes. And they will not be able to in most cases. Now ask them to explain to you something about the dunya, about the fashions. About football. Ask them. Ask your daughters to explain to you about makeup. And the latest fashions. Five minutes, you will not be able to stop them. Five, ten, fifteen, stop, stop. They'll tell you more. Tell them to give you five minutes upon the seerah. The life of Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Give me a, a five minute breakdown about the life of the Prophet. Sallallahu Name some of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, and the hardships they went through. Name some scholars of the Salaf. Because we're too busy. We want dunya for them, dunya. And the people say, but Akhi, we need dunya. What, you haven't had enough of your share of dunya yet? How long is a dars? A day is 24 hours, a dars is one hour. Oh, but brother, the dunya is important. You've given 23 out of 24 of your hours to the dunya. When you are asked to come to one dars for less than an hour, is too much, is too much deen for you? That's the argument of the ignoramus, ghafil, negligent, inattentive, careless. That's their argument. Oh, he wants us to come to the durus. What, we're not supposed to seek the dunya? How many durus are you going to come to in a week? Two hours? Monday and Wednesday? Friday and Saturday? Each one an hour? Add another 20 minutes for your journey. One hour, 20 minutes in a week? Add another hour, let's call it two hours and 20 minutes in a week. Seven days, 24 hours in a day. How, what kind of a percentage is two and a half hours of your life? Yet you are keen to send your children to school for eight hours a day. You will beat them to get out of bed and make sure that they're at the bus stop. And you'll be keen that they do their two hours of homework or three hours of homework in the evening. That's not too much. But two hours a week is too much. 
You've inverted your priorities. In fact, you've inverted your aql. If I said priorities, that's actually a praise for you. Because that assumes that you have priorities. You don't have anything. Your aql, your intellect is inverted. It's on its head. You're trying to, ba- you're trying to balance a pyramid on its smallest point. It's going to collapse. It's not going to work. And you will regret. And ask those who have regretted. Who didn't listen. And they didn't pay attention. And they lost their children. And they lost their dunya. Because they're still living in that same rented house they were living in 10 years ago. They wanted dunya and dunya and dunya. And they're still living in that two bedroom apartment. Or that two bedroom house. What dunya did you get? Oh I got a leather sofa. You got your leather sofa. In your living room. That you couldn't swing a cat in because it's so small. But alhamdulillah you got your leather sofa. That's your dunya. That's your dunya that you're chasing. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years of chasing the dunya. 20 years of putting your children through the education of Caesar. 20 years, 15 years or even 10 years, 5 year primary, 5 year secondary. Then 5 year in college and university, 2 and 3. 15 years of education and you're still in the same house. Why? Because your risk was written for you but you didn't realize it. And you thought maybe if I strive and I strive I'll get more dunya but you didn't come to you because of the fact that you are still where you were 15 years ago but maybe, maybe that 32 inch plasma has turned into a 42 inch plasma. That's your dunya. The iPhone 3 that you have is now an iPhone 11. That's your dunya. You think that you've achieved something. You lost your deen and you lost your dunya. This is the reality of what happens when you don't use your aql. Because Allah has given you intellect. All you have to do is do a simple calculation. I work in this life and I get everything in the hereafter. I destroy this life and I've destroyed my hereafter. How hard is that formula? Easy formula. If I work hard, strive for the deen of Allah, worship Allah, Allah will give me everything that I want in the hereafter. Palaces, rivers, wives, food, drink, clothing, whatever I ask for, Allah will give. Allah will give to you. But you have to strive in this world. But if you give up this world, you lose this dunya. You lose this dunya. Look at our community. Look at Muslims in Birmingham. Look at Muslims in London, elsewhere. In their 50s and 60s, dunya. They wanted their children to have dunya. So now their children are in their 20s. What do they have? Oh, he's got a good job. What is he? He works for the council. MashaAllah, he's got dunya. You call that dunya? The baker's better off than him because he wakes up when he wants, he bakes his bread, he eats from the bread, he sells his bread and he closes his shop when he wants. He's tired on tomorrow morning, I'll open him an hour later. He's got more freedom than your council worker. But my son, mashallah, he works in the accountancy department for the local council. And you think you've got your dunya. That's your dunya. That's what you sold your religion for. 20,000, 25,000 a year you sold your deen for. What did you gain? Oh, my car's automatic and three years old now. That's what you've gained. That's not dunya. You haven't gained anything. You think you've gained. That's not a gain. That's not worth selling your religion for. At least the Yahud did it for something. They got their dunya. They got their palaces. And they sold their religion for a small price. Well, the Muslim, he sells his religion, he doesn't even get anything out of it. Ah, ikhwa. Where's the uqul? I'm not telling you. I'll tell you exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said. Strive for the dunya in moderation. For that which was written for you will come to you. 
You strive, but in moderation. You don't sacrifice your religion to grab hold of the dunya. Barakallahu feekum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide our families and our communities. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.